Hi guys, welcome back to my channel where the gnomes live. This is Sharon Oyella and today I'm going to show you how I put together this boot house. I wasn't planning on decorating this boot for this video, but I did prepare this room up here and we'll get to that later. And it is finished off and ready for decorating, but I don't have decorations in there yet. I have done a, a couple of boots in previous years. I did one in 2012. I made out of real leather boots and that one is on my blog if you're interested in checking that out. And then in 2016 I did a boot that looked quite a bit like this one except for I added too much decoration in the front and then it kind of lost its boot shape. So for this project I made sure to keep it looking like a boot and I'm pretty happy with the end result. The materials that I'm using in this video for the boot itself, I used foil, masking tape, and paper towels. And I'm also going to show you how I painted it. I used real shoelaces here, some fake leaves, some moss that I got at the dollar store. All the stonework is made with paper cup trays. Doors and windows and the roof is all cardboard. And I also used some twigs as well. So with all that said, guys, why don't we just jump into it and let's get started. All right, so I just grabbed a boot out of our closet and I'm going to simply wrap some foil around that. And you can see there I had doubled over the foil and that is the strong foil. So if you're using like a really cheap foil, you would have to double that up quite a bit just to get it to hold its shape. And I should also add here, whatever method that you've chosen to get your boot shape or whatever method you want to use is totally fine. Um, I'm used to working with foil this way. I've been crafting this way for the last decade or so. But if you're more used to a traditional paper mache, that is totally fine. Whatever method works for you, works for you, and that's the right way to do it. So continuing on, I'm just adding a bit of tape around the pieces to hold the pieces that I've pieced together together, and then I can remove it from the boot and then shape the bottom out a little bit. And I'll be adding some more tape over the exterior and then the interior as well. And that masking tape is going to give it a lot of strength. So I can worry more about the shape after I get the masking tape on there. Now I am cutting slits in the side so I can uh, push the front of the boot up a little bit because I want to shape out the front of the boot. And that is one of the great things about working with foil. I can add on to that shape whenever I want to and take away from it whenever I want to. So I'm just making the front of the boot a little bit wider and a bit more prominent, make it a little bit more fantastical looking. And now I'm going to be adding the, I don't know what you call this part around the bottom of the boot and shoe, the rubber sole, I guess you call it. And I'm just making strips, I'm rolling up some strips here. It's going to add a little bit of height to the boot as well hold help hold the shape in the future as well. So you can see I, I rolled over the foil quite a bit there and that's made it quite strong. And those two pieces I'm just going to tape together once I get the shape figured out here. And I think before it was all over, I probably pieced together three. And once I had the pieces together, then I did cover that entire piece with masking tape. And the exterior part that's going to be seen, I tried to do with as little wrinkles as possible. And now I'm taping that piece that I just made on the inside. And I'm doing that because I want to maintain that little crease area around the exterior. I don't want to cover that up. So I'm taping it all together on the inside. And now I'm going to create a little separation between the boot and the rubber part. And that's going to be part of the look of the boot to make it look old and ragged. And now I'm creating the heel of the boot. I'm going to be adding the tape to the heel on the outside and I'm doing that to make that those two pieces become one piece. And I'm going to maintain that little crease that I want to keep. And now I'm going to add some height to the back of the boot. I did Google old leather boots and I used that image as inspiration for myself. So once that foil was on there, I taped it all together to make it one piece. And now I'm adding what would be a seam in the front of the boot, what would look like another piece of leather going over the toe of the boot. And now I'm going to add the sides of the boot where the laces or the holes for the laces will go. 
and I'm going to use a paper punch. Once I get this piece all taped up, I'll use a paper punch to add in the holes for the laces. And of course I had to make two of these, one for each side of the boot. The paper punch works great. You just have to make sure that the part that you're punching isn't too thick. Otherwise it becomes a bit of a hassle trying to get it to slide up and down that edge. And now I'm making the tongue of the boot. I'm going to cover that in masking tape as well. And you can use any PVA glue for this project. I'm using Elmer's all-purpose glue and I'm watering it down uh, just to make it easier to work with because I got to dip some paper towel in here and I want to be able to pull the excess glue off. There's no recipe to follow. You'll just uh, go by feel. So if you have a really thick glue, you'll want to water it down quite a bit. And I'm uh, stacking up some paper towels and I'm going to tear all the sides. All right, my friends, just popping in with a quick edit to talk about the paper towel that I'm using. So you can see there's a bit of a design on here. I get my paper towels from Walmart. This is a no-name brand. But that design disappears once it's wet, once the paper towel is wet, and I don't see it on my finished uh, product. So you don't want to use a expensive paper towel. You want to make sure that, that whatever design is on your paper towel does disappear when it's wet. You can also use napkins or newspaper or brown paper. So just keep that in mind when you start your project that you want a paper towel where the design disappears when it's wet. So you might want to test that out before you start your project. All right, so I'm dipping it into the glue and I just folded the dry sides together and then pulled the excess glue off of there. And then I made sure that both sides of the paper towel are wet with the glue. And I decided uh, partway through this project that I wasn't going to be decorating the inside. So I'm just going to cover the inside with a paper towel. It will give it some strength it will also give me a paintable surface. So I am going to paint the inside of this boot, but I'm not going to be decorating it. So for the outside, I use smaller pieces and I wanted to make sure I get uh, most of the wrinkles out. However, it is an old leather boot, so some wrinkles are needed to give it that uh, rustic look. So smaller pieces and I'm just smoothing it out as best I can and overlapping all the seams. Make sure you really work the edges in and you won't have any seams showing once the uh, paper towel is dry. And when I had put the paper towel on this section here uh, where the laces go, I did wrap it around from one side to the other. So that's a double layer of paper towel that I'm poking through. And this uh, paper towel is still wet. So I'm poking through while it's wet. Once it's dry, I'm going to poke through it again and spin the paintbrush so that the edges are nice and smooth. And now I'm going to give it a black wash. And this is a step that's not necessary. I just like the dark undertone before I add the color on top. So everything is going to get painted black. And I'm attaching the tongue of the boot. And here I'm using tacky glue and hot glue together. Uh, the hot glue will hold this piece in place while the tacky glue dries. So that's the laces part that I'm putting on now. Oh, I forgot about this. Uh, once I put all the pieces together, the boot was a bit uneven in the back, so I'm filling in those areas, and I'm also adding a little bit more decoration as far as it will look like another leather uh, piece over the heel. And then I tape it all up, and I'm going to add the paper towel and then paint that black. And here is burnt umber, so everything's going to get a coat of burnt umber. And this is burnt sienna. And this I'm actually dabbing on with a damp cloth and rubbing it in there. You can paint it on. I did one of these boots, like I said before, and I'm going by memory. And I believe this is what I did with the old one and it turned out really good. And now I'm going to do the same with golden brown, a damp cloth, and I'm going to dab that on and rub it in certain areas. You know, it, you want to make it look a little bit spotty to give it that old leather look. And now I'm doing the laces, the, the metal part of the laces. So I'm using the back end of a pencil. I found that worked perfectly over those punched holes. So I just dab the pencil in the paint and then dab it over the hole. And I'm building a door. So I have one piece of cardboard and I've cut four pieces to be glued on top to make it look like wooden planks. 
So I did cut a hole first in the base of the door. And uh, once these pieces are dry and in place, I'll cut the hole out of the top layer. Oh, I'm adding a doorknob here. And this is a little piece I found in my collection of doodads. <laughs> and I think it's a some sort of paper fastener. And I'm just using one side of it. And I, I didn't know how to attach it, so I glued in a little dowel. Now I'm making a hole for the dowel. And the doorknob is attached. And I'm using some plastic off of some packaging. And I'll just shove that in for a window. And I'm cutting out a hole. I'm going to sink this door in and I decided to go right through. So I'm cutting a hole right through the boot. And when you do cut into a piece that's made out of foil, you want to cover up the foil with masking tape. So any exposed foil gets covered with masking tape and then the paper towel. And I'm going to go ahead and paint this when I'm done. When the paper towel is all dry, I'll go ahead and paint it. And again, I'm using black to start with. Uh, the window frame is just cardboard pieces that I, I glued in place. Now I'm painting them, but there's an open edge of the cardboard. So I'm going to cover that with a paper towel just to cover that open edge. And then I'm going to go ahead and paint it again. I could have done that before I attached them, but it's been a while since I've built a project like this. So I forgot about those open edges. And I'm adding a roof, but I decided to go with some shingles. So these are just pieces of cardboard that I've cut in little one inch squares. None of them were measured. I just used my scissors and just kind of guessed my way. So the first row, you just want to overlap the edges of the roof itself just a little bit. And then the next line up, you would stagger them as you go across. If you'd like a full video tutorial on how I do these cardboard roofs, I'll put that link in the timestamps below. And here I'm fixing a little spot on the boot that was very wrinkly and there was a big dip in there and I didn't like the way it looked. So I'm filling it in with some foil, masking tape, and then I'll put the paper towel over top of that. When you do this kind of patchwork, you just want to make sure that you overlap the um, masking tape seams and make sure that that paper towel is going over beyond those seams. And I also added to the door frame, as you can see, so just some foil masking tape and paper towel. So when I add the stone work, it looks like the stones are overhanging the door. And I'm using some paper cup trays uh, to add some stone work around the door frame. And I didn't film any of that, but I'm going to show you how I do it again uh, when I make a little well. So we'll come back to that uh, sort of work in a few minutes here. But right now I'm adding some stairs and I'm just doing that by rolling up some foil. So just working the foil into a staircase type pattern and then I cover it all in masking tape and then paper towel over top of that. Once the paper towel is dry I'm going to hot glue some more of that paper cup tray onto the stairs to make stone work on the stairs. So this is the paper towel stage right here. Once that's dry then I painted it black which I didn't have to do and you don't have to do either. I don't know why I did that but <laughs> Uh, went ahead and painted it black and then added my stairs on top of that. Oh, and I'm adding some moss around the groundwork and I painted it green first, which is important to do if you're using loose moss, but I ended up finding some uh, rolled up moss that I had on hand and I didn't have to paint first. But And now I'm lacing up the boot and I actually used three laces that I tied together and I did soak these in instant coffee and a little bit of water first to make them look uh, dirty. And then I tied those together and then laced up the boot and I left the tops just hanging down. And for my little balcony there, I added some strips of cardboard to the top of my cardboard piece to make it look like planks of wood. And I went ahead and painted those. So black first and a little bit of burnt umber on top of that, make it look like planks of wood. Same thing, just planks of wood on top of cardboard. And I'm using some sticks to make a railing. I'm going to hot glue these in just to get them in place. And then I'm going to add tacky glue around all the edges. Uh, you don't want to just use hot glue when you're building stuff because if it was to sit in the sun, then everything would melt and that balcony would fall, up, fall apart. So we do need some tacky glue once we're done here. I'm just hot gluing the top railing in. And that was three sections of sticks there. 
And now I'm adding the tacky glue. And where I'm putting the tacky glue is around all the edge, and then I'm going to stick some moss in there as well. So everything is really solid once it's dry. And the top railing where I, where I pieced it together, I'm going to be adding some tacky glue in those pieces and then some moss to cover up the fact that that's three different sections on top. Oh, and this is a little piece I decided to add. It, um, it's a piece of felt that I soaked in some instant coffee just to dirty it up a little bit, and then I hot glued it into place. And my roof, I think you saw it earlier as red. I changed my mind later and made it green. And now I'm just adding some moss on top of that. I'm also going to add some mushrooms on the roof and around the boot as well. And these mushrooms I've made out of clay. You can make them out of foil, tape, and paper towel as well if you don't have any clay on hand. And I have videos for these guys. There are a few different videos for mushrooms. And I will stick those links in the timestamps below. So if you're interested in that, you can check those out. And now I'm making a chimney, and I'm not sure if I'm going to keep this chimney the way it is here, um, just painted black. So I made the foil um, masking tape and then paper towel and then painted it black. But I might change my mind before this video ends and add some stonework. I'm not sure yet. We'll see what ends up with this uh, chimney in the end. But I'm sticking a, a wire in here using an awl. I'm going to make two little holes beside each other. I'm going to stick some wire in there. And then I can use it to support my chimney. So once the chimney is in place, I can pull the wire inside and then cinch it up. And for the uh, attaching the chimney, I'm going to use tacky glue around the edge of that little piece there and then hot glue in the very center. So the hot glue will hold it in place while the tacky glue dries. And then I can go ahead and cinch up that wire. And I just made a little hole with my knife and I'm going to stick some fake leaves right in that spot there. And I'm going to stick some in the back of the boot, which I'm just going to use some pins to hold in place. So I got a couple of green pins there and I'm going to stick them right through the leaf and into the boot. And if I change my mind later, I can take those out easily. And here's another unplanned part of the project. I decided to add a, another little piece to the roof and put a window in there. So that's just three pieces of cardboard that I cut to shape and then covered those in cardboard shingles and painted it all. I was gonna go with a round window at first then change my mind and add a little square one instead. And now I'm hot gluing it to the roof and now I'm gonna be putting, once that's in, I'll put tacky glue around the edges and I'll add a little bit of moss in there as well. And I've decided to decorate the top floor after all. So I'm gonna use some scrapbook paper as wallpaper. I'm gonna do two walls. And I'm going to spread this glue around evenly so the wallpaper sticks sticks nicely across. And the back wall I've decided to use some wooden coffee stir sticks. And these need to be weighed down as they're drying. So uh, I made a cardboard piece that would fit on the back wall, covered that up with the coffee stir sticks, and then I can put a book down um, as they're drying. It takes about 20 minutes, half an hour to be totally dry. And once it's dry, I can go ahead and cut around that cardboard piece. Nice and easy to do it that way. And I'm going to stain these with instant coffee. You can paint them as well. You don't have to use a stain. But I wanted that wood look. So I went with instant coffee and a little bit of water and stained those up. And once the stain was dry, then I added hot glue and tacky glue together on the back of that cardboard piece. So the hot glue will hold it in place as it's drying. I can go ahead and stick that on the back wall. And then I decided to do a floor the same way. So I'm going to use a piece of cardboard for the floor and then cover that up with the coffee stir sticks. Let it dry, cut around my cardboard piece, and then I'm going to stain that with instant coffee as well. And unfortunately I didn't film this part, but I did attach the floor to the roof by putting tacky glue around the three edges. So the inside on top of the coffee stir sticks, uh, tacky glue around three edges, uh, pushed it into place and then turned it upside down and put hot glue around the bottom edge all the way around. And that held it in place while the tacky glue dried. I added a little hole or cut a little hole into the side of the wall there. Uh, so I can use some fairy lights that I got at the dollar store, push them into the top of that little roof that I added. And then I get light in that window and also light into the top floor as well. But unfortunately, I didn't think of that until after I had already attached all the walls. It would have been easier before, you know, I assembled everything. But I got it done. 
And I didn't do anything fancy with this door. As you can see, I just sealed up the backside. And I'm going to put a little uh, stonework frame around it. And this is going to help me be able to remove the piece easily so I can grab onto that stonework when I'm taking that piece off in the future. All right, so I didn't uh, end up attaching this roof yet, and I'm not sure if I'm going to be doing that. So it just sits on top like this. Um, I can take out the front porch. And then this piece here, and why I made the little stonework around it, is so I can grab onto it and pull it out. And then I can access the room inside. And I didn't film this part. I did finish off the edges here, and that's just pieces of cardboard. And I'm going to do the same for the little well, and I'll show you how that's done in the next few clips. And I noticed when I was putting the top floor on, the tongue of the boot wasn't very visible and I wanted the people to be able to see the tongue of the boot. So I've just added some foil to extend it, hot glued the foil in place, and now I'm covering it with the tape. And I'll put the paper towel over that. Once it's dry, I'll go ahead and paint it. And you can see a beautiful new tongue here. <laughs> Much more uh, fun to look at than the other one. And I've decided to add some stonework to this chimney after all. And I'm going to show you in the next clip how I attach these and what material I'm using. So I am using paper cup trays. This is not my idea. This is an idea that's been in the miniature world for many, many years. I don't even know who to credit for that idea. Started off using um, egg cartons. And uh, when I got on the scene uh, over a decade ago, I started using paper cup trays because it's the same material. And the thing with paper cup trays is, depending on where you get them from, they can be different colors. So here I'm using gray um, paper cup tray, and I didn't like that because it didn't match in with the rest of it. So I'm going to end up covering it in the end, but I'm going to show you how I attach them anyway. So here's a little well that I've made, a foil, masking tape and paper towel. And now I'm hot gluing these pieces into place just to keep them in place. And then I'm going to cover it with, with um, white glue after. But I'm going to hot glue all of these pieces in. And you can cut these as well. I just tear mine, but if you're making bricks, you can cut them into brick size. In the end, they make a beautiful texture. I just love working with paper cup trays. So easy and fun to work with. And uh, once I got this all covered, like the surface covered, I did add some more to make it look like boulders were sticking out, like stonework sticking out. So you can shape them. And then I put hot glue around the edge and then I put them in place and they hold that shape quite nicely. So I'm going to put a few of these around. And like I said, in the end, I ended up covering this entire well up with another uh, paper cup tray with the color that I wanted. I wasn't being very observant this day. <laughs> I should have noticed that they were a completely different color. But And here's the finished well with a few boulders sticking out. I really like the overall look of this piece. And now I'm going to add the white glue. So any white glue will do. You can use tacky glue or Elmer's glue. And I'm just going to use my finger and rub it in all over the entire surface. Make sure all the edges are sticking down. If you don't like using your finger, you can do it with a paintbrush as well. But I just use my finger and get the glue all over there, spread around. And then here's the piece covered again <laughs> with the right paper cup tray. So it's a little bit wider. And now I'm sticking in two sticks. I just made a couple of holes and I've glued these sticks in place. And now I'm going to use tacky glue to put a, a bar across. And I figured this out a little bit too late. I could have drilled holes and I've done it here with a knife to stick the handle in to make it look like it's protruding through. Um, but I could have stuck that stick right through both ends and then it would be actually sticking right through. But in the end, I just decided to leave it the way it was and just make it look like it so I sink both ends in um, by drilling a hole first with my, with my knife and then using tacky glue to attach them. So nobody knows but us that this piece is um, in three different sections. <laughs> we could have stuck it right through, but oh well, it looks all right in the end. We made it work. And now I'm adding the twine in the center. And after I add this twine, I'm going to be making a little bucket. And I needed a certain size, so I decided to make the bucket out of foil because I could make it any size I want to and cover that with tape and then paper towel and go ahead and paint it. So here's the bucket all finished and now I'm sticking a wire in. So I'm using an awl to make the holes on each end and I'm going to shape a little wire piece. Put that in for the handle and now I'm going to attach the twine. So I'm going to wrap a piece around the handle and use some tacky glue to hold it. 
uh, together. And then I use a smaller piece of twine to wrap around those ends I just glued together. And to hold that while it's drying, I'm going to use a binder clip. And now I'm going to finish the roof off. So the end caps I'm just made with some cardboard. So I'm just gluing those in. So tacky glue to, to glue it in and then hot glue to hold it while the tacky glue dries. And again, if you're interested in seeing how I make these cardboard roofs, that link is in the timestamps below. So now the roof is finished and I can go ahead and attach the bucket now. So a little bit of twine there I'm going to wrap around and I'm going to use tacky glue as well to hold everything in place. And I'm going to put the top rail across. So I'm just going to flatten out the bottom edge of this twig here using my X-Acto knife so it sits nice and flat on top. And again, tacky glue to glue that together. And then tacky glue right across the top. And then I can go ahead and attach my finished roof. And this is going to seem a little bit backwards because you saw it finished in the previous clip. So I actually fixed my walkway. So the original walkway I put down, I didn't really like the tiny boulders. So I'm just going to hot glue some larger pieces right over top. And here's the finished walkway. And I use moss to cover in what needed covering. All right, my friends, that will bring us to the end of this video. Sometime in the new year, we'll come back to it and we'll decorate the top floor and we'll also make a character or two. And until then, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your year and keep healthy and safe. And we'll see you super soon.